Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, click the like button and subscribe. It means a lot to me and uh, I appreciate the subscribers that have already subscribed. I'm very happy. Thank you so much. Um, last Monday, the United States and the Philippines began their annual two-week joint naval exercise. This time involving 2,550 Americans and 530 Filipino troops. Uh, called Kamandag, K-A-M-A-N-D-A-G, Kamandag, Kamandag, an acronym in Filipino meaning Cooperation of the Warriors of the Sea, will run from October 3rd to October 14th, which was yesterday. Uh, it ran to, because today is the 15th, you know now, the joint island-based exercises will include um, amphibious landings, live fire, and humanitarian assistance. Japan and South Korea are joining the exercises as observers. The United States and the Philippines, which for the last 70 years have been bound by a mutual defense treaty, have been holding these annual joint exercises for decades. On Monday, the two U.S. lawmakers from the House of Representatives arrived in the Philippines to strengthen bilateral relations between Washington and Manila. The visit from Massachusetts Democrat Seth Moulton and Florida Rep uh, Republican Mike Waltz was confirmed by the Philippine House Speaker's Office and Lenti First District Representative Ferdinand Martin Romuldis. Romaldus. Moulton and Waltz, both members of the House Armed Services Committee, were greeted by Senator Aimee Marcos, the sister of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., along with other lawmakers. According to Representative uh, Romaldus, the lawmakers' visit coincided with the joint military exercises, which are the first joint war games to be conducted under the new administration of President Marcos. This year, Kamamandrag War Games will also feature the high mobility artillery rocket systems, the system that has been put to great use in Ukraine's fight against Russia. The last time the U.S. and the Philippines conducted a joint military exercise was in March of this year uh, when nearly 9,000 U.S and Filipino soldiers took part in war games across the main island of Luzon. The March war games have been scheduled for the previous fall, but were delayed due to pandemic lockdowns. These are the final joint military exercises conducted during former President Rodrigo Durante's administration. Hmm. Well... I don't know about this one, but it says U.S. troops ordered to begin drilling amid tensions with China. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see how this one pans out, won't we? Oh, a lot going on in our, around our world. Yeah, a lot going on. Well, let's try this one here. Uh, let's see here. Trump-backed candidate set to upset this 21-year incumbent. Senator Lisa Murkowski, a 21-year incumbent who supported impeach impeachment, is expected to be defeated by Trump supporter Kelly Tishbaka who is anticipated to win by a slim margin this week, Republican from AK. A paraphrase 538's race simulation. To, uh, Tishbaska is expected, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Tishiba, T-S-H-I-B-A-K-A, Shibaka, is expected to win 52 times out of 100, whereas Murkowski will only win 48. The results of the model are consistent with those of the polls, which show that Tishbaska 
Tabasca has a marginal advantage over the current incumbent. Boy, that's a long time though, 21 years? Wow. When you consider that Murkowski is a staple in Washington, D.C., Uniparty, any prediction that goes in favor of Shabaka is noteworthy. The projected margin of victory is barely a few points, and it's quite possible that the race will be won by a margin of less than 3% of the entire vote. Uh, Shabaka confronts a number of obstacles to, sh to Shabaka, one of the which being the recently implemented ranked choice voting system in Alaska, which ultimately gives Democratic voters the ability to vote for Murkowski on the second and third ballots. This presents a difficult difficulty for Shabaka. A recent video exposes an aide to senior Lisa Murkowski, who stated that people who wanted Lisa to win re-elected re were behind the initiative on the 2020 ballot to decide whether or not to implement ranked choice voting in Alaska. Rank choice voting. Hmm. Not every circumstance works in Murkowski's favor. Shabaka has a good chance of unseating incumbent Senator Lisa Murkowski, who inherited her position from her father 21 years ago. Tisbaka Shabaka has received three endorsements from former candidates who are no longer running for office, which is a significant development considering the rank choice voting system now in place. As support for Shabaka has grown more consistent, there is a lower likelihood the votes will be lost to Murkowski during the voting process. Shabaka has also been quite successful with fundraising within the state. Shabaka is currently ahead in the race for donations from Alaskan residents by approximately $20,000, which is an impressive account accomplishment given that Murkowski has been in office for the past 21 years and has raised 85% of her 2022 cycle donations from sources outside the state of Alaska. To date, 85% of all of Murkowski's funding has come from individuals and organiza organizations located in other states. According to Open Secrets, only 15% of the funding, $929,774, has come from contributions made within the state. It is possible that Murkowski's relationship with Democrats in the District of Columbia is to blame for the shortfall in in-state fundraising she has experienced. In the past two years, she's voted nine times with the Democrats, including votes to be to spend large amounts of money that were paid for by taxpayers, which lead to an increase in inflation. Of course it does. In addition, she supported the impeachment of former President Donald Trump in 2021 and has shown herself to be pro-abortion despite living in a state that is strongly pro-life. Murkowski, a Republican representing Alaska, gave an interview to members of the media while she was walking down the Senate subway of the United States Capitol. Today, the Senate's impeachment trial concluded with President Donald Trump being found not guilty of all charges. But now the video I did earlier today in between my housework, lunch break, and everything else going on here, um, I wonder if that involves the new information that I gave on the uh, uh, other update uh, this morning about the inside person that set Biden up to raid Trump's home, Mar-a-Lago. In addition, Senator Mur Murkowski has promised to collaborate with the administration of President Joe Biden if she's victorious in the upcoming election. She has promised to collaborate. Well, well, Joe Biden, you better start dangling that carrot, honey, so she can take a bite of it. 
if she's victorious. Or what if she isn't? Where will that leave poor Joe? Oh, boy. She remarked, I'm working with them to promote things. Sure. Referring to the enormous federal spending packages proposed by President Joe Biden, such as the Biden administration inflation Here we go again, Betty. Hang on. Inflationary infrastructure bill. Boy, you don't want to say that too fast. <laughs> Try saying that about ten times real fast. <laughs> the promise does not come as a surprise. Murkowski has voted to approve many of President Joe Biden's cabinet appointments, such as Interior Secretary Deb Haaland, H-A-A-L-A-N-D, Haaland, who has spearheaded the assault on Alaska's energy producers with two dozen unilateral orders putting thousands of energy jobs in jeopardy as a result. Oh my God. During last week's energy summit, summit held by Shabaka Oil and Gas Workers Associated President Matt Cote remarked, we knew before the election that Interior Secretary Deb Haaland would oppose our jobs, that she was out to grab our jobs, and he wasn't wrong. And for Lisa Murkowski to cast the tie-breaking vote to progress her confirmation, it is truly a smack in the face for every American who works in this business, he continued. And as for Lisa Murkowski to provide the tie-breaking decision to advance her confirmation. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And this proceeding is a summary of an article that originally appeared on Breitbart. I tell you what, it is fight to the finish, isn't it? Like I put up that one uh, uh, video, set up a boxing ring. Come on, let's just put them all in that boxing ring and let's see who see who comes out on top. You know, and make that ring pretty big, because boy, there's a lot of fighting and backstabbing going on, disrespecting each other. Nobody can come together and make a common sense suggestion to solve any problems that I can see right now. Leave a comment, let me know. I'll be back. See y'all later. And you are a blessing. Later.